All right, hello, and welcome to the Off by One security stream. I'm coming to you from uh, Miami Beach, Florida right now, which is why there's an extra you know, guest member there, which is my audio, just to make the things work while I'm on the road. I, I haven't quite figured things out when I'm traveling, so I need to do a little more work there in investigation. But thank you so much for joining, and we have a very special guest, Kuba Gretzky. Very excited to hear about the latest work with uh, Evil Jinx. Is that how you pronounce it, Evil Jinx? Because I see people arguing about it all the time. Yeah, I, I get this question every time. So it's what like, you... uh, I, I call it Evil Jinx, but okay. it's, it's also fine if anyone calls it Evil Gen X, Evil uh, Gen X, or whatever. Like, I, all forms the funniest are fine. One, the funniest one I heard is Evil Engine X. I'm like, wow. Oh, yeah, it's the, with the additional N, which is not <laughs> in the name. So, <laughs> well, it, it's the same as with Engine. So, yeah, yeah, totally. Cool. All right. So again, welcome everyone. Um, I think anything I want to say before we get started up here, we're going to start off as usual, where I'm going to ask a couple questions to Kuba. And if you have questions, please do put them up. It takes about 10 to 15 seconds for them to get posted. So if things are taking a little while, just understand there's some latency there. Since we do stream to Twitter and LinkedIn and YouTube all at the same time, um, it, it just can be a little bit of delay. We will be giving away three, or Kuba will be giving away three free seats to his new course, which he's gonna tell you about very soon, which is fantastic. We're gonna do that via trivia questions towards the end of the session. And we'll also, or Kuba will also be giving a 20% discount to taking the training um, for anyone who's attended here. We'll give out the code for that. So very, very awesome to have that to go along with this great session. So I guess we'll start off, um, Kuba, one of my questions that I, I hear come up a lot, like, so I saw, I think you retweeted it or someone tweeted it and you liked it, but basically someone said, hey, I basically demonstrated Evil Jinx to a Fortune, I think, 100 customer, and they were so, like, obviously interested in it and concerned about it that they went and got YubiKeys and implemented that, the, the FIDO 2.0 specification or whatever it is. Um, do you see that happening a lot? Like, how many organizations are starting to do that or some form of protection against this type of attack? Like, what are you seeing out there? Yeah, well, uh, I don't see anything myself personally, but uh, I get uh, information from the people who actually do present Evil Jinx to wider audience. Like, for example, uh, uh, Manit from Red Team Raw gave me like an, uh, uh, some, told me some stories how he is presenting Evil Jinx at, uh, at some conferences. And there is a lot of good feedback from the audience because people are essentially even after six years uh, since I have uh, released the first version of Evil Jinx and the, this type of reverse proxy attack is not really something new. It was also present before. Uh, then it, not much has changed since then. And uh, a lot of people are, people are just uh, a bit shocked how easy it is and that the multi-factor authentication as they know it is not really that uh much of a silver bullet they were told so uh i remember like this this comment that uh, that i posted that someone really said that uh it actually convinced the the big company to go full on with uh, ubiquis because uh you can protect uh, your website even the biggest vendors are not doing enough we shall be also presenting today a bit what can uh, the vendors do to do the the least possible Thing that uh, to make to strengthen the the security of, uh, for their users, but uh, still, uh, essentially, it's it's the be best outcome uh, if the tool if Evil Jinx is actually being used uh, to to convince people to switch to something stronger because you can bypass anything else. It's just the U2F. I'll also probably answer the other questions that will come by. Uh, so the U2F or FIDO2 uh, solutions basically uh make this kind of attack reverse proxy phishing attack uh, impossible because there is a second factor which is on the uh on the client on the side of the client yeah so how does that work at the low level is that uh basically hardware device like a something that plugs in with encryption keys that are kind of yeah. like say for it's example i want to Sorry, God. <laughs> yeah, sure. I'm sorry. I didn't want to. Interrupt, you know but, what my question uh, was. Gonna I be. just know because uh, I've been. The, uh, I heard this question so many times that <laughs> I already know where it's going. So, uh, so yes, essentially, it's uh, like a second device, external device, which uh, tests. Uh, its main idea is that it will test if it's in the proximity of the device that is logging in. So it is either a pluggable 
uh, UB key that's sitting in your uh, USB drive, or if it's the FIDO2, for example, the, the, the pass keys that you have on your phone. Uh, I have not checked exactly how the, the pass keys the, on, the, on the mobile device check if they're in proximity, but it is either, I think, uh, Bluetooth proximity or being on the same Wi-Fi network, possibly. Mm -hmm. And uh, essentially what, what it does is it will generate this kind of like a key challenge response uh, from, from this external device, taking uh, one of the factors of generating this uh, special like a uh, key uh, for, for the website to verify on the server side is the URL taken directly from the client's browser. So this is like the main, the, the weakest point of the phishing attack. It's you need to always have a phishing domain set up which will always be different from the real one because obviously you cannot spoof it I, only if you had uh, the private keys of the uh, of the TLS certificate that you are trying to spoof or you uh, hack the certificate authority and generated your own certificate so, so that you can actually pose as the real domain. But either way, the URL is the weakest point and you can also check it uh, on the client side, which I will show later. Okay, great. Have you seen anyone come up with some novel attack that might let you get around that? Uh, not really. There is this kind of like a YubiKey relay attack, but so far from what I saw, it's it's about having, I think, an implant on the device that actually has the YubiKey connected. But once you're already on the target machine, yeah. then you can grab the cookies from the browser. So like, there's no way to overkill it. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, it's tough. I mean, I, it's funny. We we always talk. I get the question constantly, and I'm sure you get it as well. Which is like, how much longer is this going to work? How much longer are we going to be able to do that? And uh, it's just one of those things that obviously it's a cat and mouse game. We always move on to the next thing. But you know, this this attack technique is, I think, I mean, way more important than people yeah. realize it is, and it's been around for quite some time. I remember when it, it, it all goes for the uh, regarding. I think uh, the adoption of the the, the sec secure um, solutions. So the YubiKey did not really make much of a difference in terms of, I think, uh, consumer market. Because uh, if you tell some random person that they can secure their account uh, by having this like small device that they can just put somewhere and lose it pretty like in five minutes. And once they lose it, they lose access yeah. to all of their accounts. Then this is the scary part. And the, I'm 100% sure that it is the, the the one main thing that actually makes people not want to use uh, this solution. I think passkeys are more and more getting uh, uh, popular. I think this year there is a lot of uh, talk that there was this uh, uh, conference uh, I've heard about authentic code or I forgot like it, it, was, it was in the US somewhere I forgot and the the main talking point was uh, passkeys that are coming out this year and I think also Microsoft is releasing it in the uh, in their authenticator uh, and more and more websites maybe will start pushing this uh, kind of solution so we'll see like if the adoption is high then obviously like this reverse proxy phishing technique will be uh, thwarted for good yeah, yeah, it's kind of like when uh, SSL Strip came out, right? And then uh, HSTS comes out to try to stop that, but then SSL Strip Two comes out, and like once you get to a point where you can't, I, I would compare it, I guess, to like uh, with with buffer overflows and return oriented programming. You have um, what's the protection? Uh, the shadow stacks and the control flow enforcement. Control flow guard. Yeah. Yeah, and or control flow enforcement technology, where you've got like the mm -hmm. end branch instructions and such, like. That that once completely implemented, once all the hardware supports it and such, and Microsoft turns it on by default, uh, that's gonna that's that's gonna kill ROP and kill buffer overflows once and for all, at least on a stack. And um, you know, this is kind of one of those things as well. Once once this gets killed, it's definitely decreases the attack surface for us uh, being able to do these fun things. So, <laughs> yeah, it is it 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 is a different bit of uh, a solution on uh, regarding like uh, exploit mitigation because it is something that the vendor can implement without the the user having to uh, like put any interaction uh, with it to to make it work and it would be much better if there was actually a solution that uh, the vendors could implement without any interaction from the user because right now the uh, the security is is basically outsourced to the user 
and right. there is no way to do it the other way around when the vendor actually can decide if something is secure or not because it's the user who has to protect themselves by using either the U2F or FIDO2 uh, solution to, to protect their account. Totally. Yeah, so Michelle asked here, is there something called passwordless by Microsoft? Is that fishable? Uh, passwordless, essentially, I think the passwordless is also based on this uh, this FIDO2 uh, solution. So once you have the, the passkey registered on your external device and you can just enter your uh, email and you do not need the password because you will get the notification on your phone and uh, the website will actually recognize you that you're using the uh, the unhackable like uh, secret key that that is stored uh, private key on your on your uh, mobile device. So the password will not be needed at that time. But it is similar thing. Like once you have the pass keys set up, then you can go passwordless essentially because password will be obsolete. Right, right, for sure. Cool. All right. Well, I haven't seen too many questions coming yet. I'm sure they will start streaming in soon here. But let's go ahead and uh, I guess have you take us through some interesting things. Yeah, sure. Uh, so essentially, uh, tell me if it's uh, too small because I can make it larger. Uh, yeah. So first, of, <laughs> I'll just maybe probably make it a bit bigger. The issue is it will make like this whole. Um, there are a lot of tables in ASCII, so they may get like mangled in the in the way. Uh, so first things first, like this year, I'm releasing the the pro version of Evil Jinx, and the the biggest change from the public version. So this will be only for uh, red team companies and the professionals who actually use it, uh, who are certified maybe to use it in the for good and not to uh, to do bad things. Uh, so uh, the main thing that I've been working on for the last couple of months, uh, which is also like the, the the main reason why our like stream got delayed since uh, November, <laughs> which because I, I wanted to actually show something that that I uh, that I completed, is that I changed Evil Jinx to use now. Uh, client server into client server architecture. So before you actually had to SSH into the server where you installed Evil Jinx, you had to set up like a Tmax session or like a screen so that it runs in the background and then you had to uh, talk to it and go server by server if you had several servers uh, set up. So right now you can see that I am, this is, this Evil Jinx is actually running in my command, uh, win, uh, command window and this is running locally. When I type in servers, I can list all of the servers that I have set up with uh, with Evil Jinx with this client. So, for example, if I go and connect to the server that's named uh, local, which is the local host, you can see the IP is uh, 127. Then you can see on the top left, that it doesn't matter like if you cannot really see what is in there, but it says that I am uh, actually right now connected to it. So this works the, now the same way as uh, Evil Jinx used to. I can list all the fishlets. I can list all the lures. Uh, so first of all, maybe I'll show like a demonstration how this remote uh, reverse proxy phishing attack works with some uh, basic website, uh, which will come from the uh, training lab that I set up with the Evil Jinx uh, mastery course that uh, that I made. Uh, so first of all, this is this, we will be using the fishlet. So fishlet is like a small script that evil jinx uses and it is uh, it is used like uh, essentially evil jinx is a framework it requires these fishlets to uh, interface with the website you want to target so you need a specific fishlet for a specific website that you want to target to have uh, to, to fish users for credentials uh, on on this on this website so then you create a lore with uh, lures a create and now you essentially have the your phishing link so once you get the link that we will copy we will go to the uh, this is the the victim browser that i set up so first of all we'll clear all the cookies we will set up put put the link in and you can see uh, it will go into the, the sign-in page of your target website. This is from the training lab of, that, that I prepared uh, where you can train all of the scenarios with different protections and so on. And essentially, uh, once you see on the right that we have like the new visitor and we will now try to log in. So we'll, we'll put the email and the password, click login. And now there it's uh, obviously it has enabled 
MFA because it's the main point, like we have to uh, bypass it. So what I will now do is find my find my app with the MFA. Okay, now it changed. Okay, and now we're logged in. You can see on the on the right side that it said that all the tokens have been intercepted. And now once we list the sessions, we see uh, that the sessions are uh, the session is essentially recorded with our captured tokens. And if we view this session, we get presented with the login, uh, the password, which is the password is not showing because I'm I made like a uh, demo mode version of Evil Jinx so that I do not show my passwords on, on stream, but you can uh, <laughs> capture the, the, the session cookie if you want. Uh, so uh, now I will copy this session uh, cookie uh, that essentially uh, has the token that when you inject it into the other into your web, uh, web browser, it will give you access to the website that uh, that the user logged into. So now we go to the attacker's machine. So this is the, the attacker's browser. And just to show you, of course, you can see on the on the left that it is not the real website. So it has like this fake.com uh, domain. It is running locally. So I have the fake.com. I have the ownership of this domain locally. So <laughs> it's, it's not that I registered it. Uh, and now when I type in the real the real website name so this is the legit the one that's actually using the the real host name then i see i am not logged in but when i go into the cookie tool and i import the cookie that i captured with evil jinx and now i reload the site then i see i am i am logged in so this is like how i how the attacker will use the cookie captured from the uh, from the user, even though MFA was uh, enabled on their account, they have full access uh, to the to the user's uh, account. Uh, so additionally, I wanted to give like a, a, a bonus thing. So I will show you that uh, now Evil Jinx Pro also uh, contains all of the, it exposes the full a API. So basically because it's a client server architecture, the client talks to the server through uh, the API. Everything is of obviously secured. Uh, there is like a, a special way of communication with the server, which is hidden uh, to the outside. So there will be no way of anyone being able to access the admin uh, API without the real token and knowing the, uh, the real host name and also not having the client certificate, which is uh, generated dynamically uh from the from the license server once you have the license to evil jinx like it, it also took a bit of time to to properly set up in terms of uh, security and uh to make it less possible for for the software to be cracked in the future because it will probably eventually get leaked at some point and and uh, then it will be game over so as you can see uh i can list all of the sessions right now that are currently being used uh, that we that we captured there's also like we can set up the check the lures we can check all the fishlets that are set up on the on the server and this can in the future serve as the base for creating the web ui maybe for evil jinx so for now i wanted to stick to the terminal kind of ui uh, so that it is not too much work for me but uh, once uh once I go to that phase that everything else is working great, then I can uh, maybe focus on the web UI if it's needed. Because if the terminal is actually sufficient for everyone, then I don't think it will uh, make much sense to, to implement it. Uh, so for now, I wanted to show also something more interesting, if it's going to work. But, uh, but to make things interesting, we will try to fish uh, the Google account. So for that, I'm going to connect to the external server that I have set up uh, with Evil Jinx running. <clears throat> so this is the, the server that I set up on uh, DigitalOcean Droplet. And you can see I have Google already set up here. So we can create the URL, uh, create the lure for Google. And, and on that real quick, uh, what is yeah. what is your recommendation for registering a domain name like Let's Encrypt or like where, where's the best place to go? 
uh well for registering the domain it doesn't really matter if you use namecheap or or whatever other like domain provider it for the the phishing like red teaming uh scenarios for engagements it is best to register a domain uh f i think like three months before the engagement so that it's a bit um, for for domain grooming you could say to to make it look more legitimate and also have to categorize it afterwards uh online so that it, it because there are many like security products that will be testing the um the authenticity of the domain but i think the best way is to actually snipe for some uh, domain that has actually been registered like several years ago and someone forgot to uh to to extend the the registration period for it so that, that's actually the, the the best way cool thanks so for this lore i will change the path so that it looks more convin uh, convincing so i can for example uh make the path of this phishing url to be like document um some number slash view now we will grab this phishing link and this one is uh, set up externally on my uh, domain that you can see eviljinx.xyz this is the real domain it's not like some uh, template and we will see if we are actually able to uh, to use it so now the 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 person who's being fished opens this link And they're actually seeing the sign-in page, so they proceed to, to log in. I will use one of my test accounts. <laughs> okay, and now I get the MFA prompt that I will open on my phone. I don't know if you can see, uh, it's like it shows on my phone to accept uh, my connection right now. Uh, so I click, yes, it's me. Okay, it clicked. And now I'm the 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 fish person is being redirected. So the redirection can be it can be actually customized. You can redirect to some uh, real document or whatever you want to fish to to fill up the your uh, pretext for the for the red team. Uh, scenario that that you chose uh okay <laughs> one, one, some, uh, some people are actually already trying to logging in into the into the <laughs> website that i set up so that's nice. Uh, nice so so now we can see the session uh that we just captured and just let me show if it if it worked so this is the the cookie that is captured for for google so Google is one of the most uh, difficult actually to, to fish uh, these days because they always implement some new protections that take weeks or months to, to, to figure out how to bypass. Uh, right now it works, but I don't know like uh, how long, for how long, they probably maybe they're on uh, watching this stream and now they will uh, change something just to make it a bit more difficult, we'll, uh, we'll see. So uh, on the attacker machine, you can see, I will just show that we are not logged in to make sure that it is this whole video is not like a, a scam or a pre-recorded demo and now we will just uh, import the cookies go into gmail.com okay and you can see that we are in like this is the this is the account that we that we just fished so this is this is essentially how the attacker would uh would steal the the account which is not protected with any of the secure methods and using just uh, a simple uh mfa uh method in a way so we can always also like sign out uh from it because that way i can invalidate the cookies at least um And yes, so if Google works, it's actually great because that was the most stressing part for the for the <laughs> whole for the whole demo. And so now, what I wanted to talk—if there are any questions, I can maybe now answer a bit. But I yeah, can I just got, move on. Mm -hmm. I got uh, one question DM to me, uh, and there's a couple up on the screen too. But one that got DM to me was um, I was working on a pen test engagement 
recently to where I needed to demonstrate to this financial institution that I was actually able to not just get into someone's account, but make like a transfer of money or a wire of money, where when you go to click on that to do it, there's again, another authentication required, like another factor mm -hmm. required. So if you trick somebody to log into their bank, for example, because you tell them that the uh, uh, it's been compromised, check your balance kind of thing, and someone steals their creds and their session and they're able to go in and then click on the wire transfer, they're not going to receive that code. So what's a smart way to like continue tricking them? Is there anything you know of? Um this, yeah, this is actually one of the good ways to, to protect against these kind of attacks, because if you can only uh, fish through uh, the MFA once when they are actively engaged in the phishing scenario, but once you are already in the, in the account and uh, th it's a common like uh, scenario um, for the, for the uh, defense teams to set up an additional MFA for the most critical uh, operations. So like making a, 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 a transfer, for example, which is pretty smart because that way um, you can only like do some kind of attack like MFA bombing, right? The, the, but it, it won't uh, happen because you, you have no, the, the user is not actually pressing anything. They will receive the, S, the code via SMS and you just need to know uh, the SMS that they received. So could, I I would think that actually you could give them like this this whole like uh, reverse proxy phishing session that they are currently in, and probably once they are already in in their account, the through JavaScript being injected in real time, you could force them into making a transaction. Something like that maybe would work much better because once yeah. you lose the connection with the real user who has the multi-factor device, then you basically you, you are like, uh, you, you cannot do much with. Well, I was going to say something like maybe you can um, say, hey, your session's about to expire. We need you to enter in a second token and end the token again or something maybe. Yeah, the, the issue cool. is that, th that this person would have to give you this token somehow right <laughs> like yeah right. once you're already using your own web browser on the on the real website so yeah it's it's, it's tricky but i think it would involve some form of um, prolonging the, the the phishing session not only uh, throughout the, the the login but also uh, throughout making some action right after they uh, they they log into to the website yeah. um Okay, so now I wanted to talk about like the the protections that they are also implementing uh, more and more. Um, that's called I call it secret token, or I prefer recently more like a shadow token. So the I can actually show um, how this looks like in terms of. Let me actually use Burp Suite. So uh, what it is used currently on uh, LinkedIn, uh, for example, so it's like an, uh, during the sign in process, the, the website generates an additional uh, secret token with the metadata gathered uh, with the telemetry of the of the client's browser and including usually also the URL of the of the website you are you're currently on. And uh, now that I am actually at it, I wanted to also show, let me just go to the proxy, open the browser. Because I wanted to show all the all the viewers also how this token looks like. Just take time to open it for a bit. Okay, let's go to LinkedIn. And in terms of protecting the, the website, what I wanted to also discuss briefly, it's just, I cannot really make it much bigger, I think. Oh, oh no, I can. Great. So there are two, there is one and the second object that I wanted to discuss. I also like mentioned it many times, so maybe it will not be a surprise to anyone, but there is this object called window location. So this window location actually holds the, the real website that's actually uh, the URL that's in the URL address bar and it, it is uh, unspoofable. So once you actually uh, control on the in the Java on the JavaScript level on the website, you can check if you if the user is on the 
phishing site or if it's on the legitimate site. And you can do it with some simple like check uh, when you just do the regular expression and you do the match. Now let's see if I if my regular expression skills are. So, for example, you can do a code like this on the website that the user is currently logging in and check it before uh, the the sign in to the to the website takes place. So this will uh, make sure that the URL ends with LinkedIn.com, and if it doesn't, uh, then it should prevent the user from being able to to log in. <clears throat> and of course, obviously, if you want to make it harder for the attacker, because Evil Jinx uh, is using regular expression as well to replace data on the fly that is being proxied uh, through the attacker's server. So if I'm able to find like this kind of code, like if um, for example, I can I can write I can implement a simple script on on my own website and check if it's uh, not or maybe just do it like this. If it's not null, then it's true. Then it's everything is fine, right? But if it's uh, if it's a wrong website, then it will obviously return false, and then I can act uh, upon it. And there are m multiple obfuscation engines that can be also used. Uh, to obfuscate your code and if you do it dynamically while the website is uh, sending the data from the from the server uh, evil jinx will not know what to expect from so it will not know what exactly to replace and and find it so this is like one thing that will definitely uh, make it much harder for the attacker using evil jinx to uh, to combat and there's also one trick you can use when you look for one one of the elements in the in the dom so for example uh, a body which is always on every website and you go to the property that's called base uri i just forgot about the quotes and you can also see that every item has this hidden property that you can use to generate for example this secret token and this is what uh what uh, linkedin is is doing so let's try to log in with some uh, fake data because I just want to show you how this token looks like so we'll do sign in okay obviously it, it will tell me that something is wrong to because it has to and but hopefully it got intercepted I just have to just find it Okay, there's this login submit, and hopefully this is, yeah. Okay, so this is the the post packet that's being sent. Let me maybe enlarge it a bit. Uh, you don't have to see clearly what it is all about, but you can see that one of the post arguments is this APFC uh, 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 value, the, the, the key that's being sent with the, with the post request. And you can see a huge blob of data here. And this is being sent and you have no idea how it is generated. You can obviously reverse engineer the uh, the JavaScript that's being on the website because it has to somehow generate this value on the client side. Uh, but it will probably take you weeks or maybe it's not even possible because JavaScript is so hard to actually work with that uh, reverse engineering it properly may, may be not a viable uh, approach. So when I put it, this value into here, I can already see that it is uh, probably a JSON one because th these are like the, the JSON quotes. So if I go to plugins and do the conversion, or it's my, yeah, uh, it's URL decode. Okay, now I can beautify it a bit. Okay, so now you can see that it is actually a JSON structure and it contains some kind of like encrypted data and this data probably contains the the url taken on the client side from the from the web browser because when this data is corrupted in any way when you are actually doing a reverse proxy uh, attack and the client either do, does not receive this data or uh, this data includes the phishing domain within without, within uh, somewhere in this encrypted blob of data, they will lock your account on the successful uh, phishing attempt. 
And this is uh, what I wanted to discuss now, which is one of the features in Evil Jinx Pro that I am implementing. And this is essentially uh, about the module I called uh, Evil, Evil Puppet. And Evil Puppet uh, is a web browser uh, working in the background. Uh, and Evil Jinx interfaces with this background browser and is able to talk to it. And I can show. You, I will now show you exactly what I mean. I will connect back again to the to my local machine. I'll just make sure that all of this stuff is reset, just in case. And we will create the lure I have prepared for for LinkedIn. So we will now try to fish the, the LinkedIn account. So if all goes well, when I open uh, the, <coughs> you can see there are Chrome browsers being opened. And this, this uh, normally will happen in the background, but this is the evil puppet uh, creating a Chrome browser using a Puppeteer uh, module. And this is where the, the fun begins, because once the user actually logs in, it will transfer the credentials in real time to the to the background browser the background browser will open the real website try to log in it will capture this apfc uh, value within the post request which is on the where the request is on the valid website so it will contain valid data which will be whitelisted by uh, by the destination server it will capture the value of this uh, of this token and transfer it back to evil jinx and evil jinx will replace the value of this mal of the malformed token because it's using the uh, the fake domain the fake.com domain and it will uh, after replacing it it will proceed with the with the login so this i will demonstrate right now how it looks like it may happen pretty quickly so it is important that you pay attention now once i open it so now i'm trying to sign in you can see evil jinx opens it enters all the data and now it resets and aborts uh, the whole thing and now it gave me the so now the the, the real apfc token was uh, put into evil jinx uh, phishing session and i got the notification on my phone to proceed with the sign in request okay, i have no idea why it didn't show up now after i clicked the linkedin app is some sometimes acting weird maybe i can click recent Okay, so it was good enough to, to... So now you can see that it is actually asking me uh, to sign in. So I say, yes, yes, it's me. And now it said all authorization tokens were intercepted. It uh, cleared the... Uh, you, you saw that it closed the, the background browser because it already was uh, successful in, in, in the phishing of the tokens. And we can see that despite the fact that the secret token was used, we after we captured it from the background browser and in, injected it into the reverse proxy session, uh, the reverse fi uh, proxy phishing session, uh, it allowed us to actually uh, capture the, the, the login token. So what I will now test, if everything works, we open the, the attacker's browser, we clear the cookies, I can confirm that I am not logged in. Okay, I'm not logged in. I will clear again just because it's better to have everything clean. Then I import the tokens. And what the attacker is now seeing is, is the same uh, website. So, yes. Nice. That's awesome. <laughs> so yeah, so th this is one thing that is only possible currently with Ev Evil Jinx Pro, and I have uh, 
big hopes for expanding uh, this type of uh, interfacing with this background browser because there are lots of uses for it. Like, for example, uh, Cloudflare protecting the website set to maximum security settings will always display the captcha for the user and captcha and it also implements uh once it actually triggers this whole cloudflare script it will check everything like the url uh, so there's no way to bypass it like i would not want to spend several weeks trying to figure out what the cloudflare uh, script is actually doing uh but what I figured out is you can, maybe if time allows later, uh, I can also show you how to bypass this Cloudflare protection because once you actually allow the background browser uh, to open uh, the real website and click this yes I am human thing and make it go on because GitLab for example is protected uh, in this way, then when you get uh, this uh, cookie that is actually clearing the access uh, for the user, you can then grab this uh, cookie and inject it into the reverse proxy session. So it will uh, reverse proxy session will be whitelisted because it was already uh, confirmed to be to go through this am I human thing, and uh, and the user who's being fished will not get the same verification checks as uh, as the as the other new user. So it's like what one of the one of the quirks that that can also be uh, be used. Um, one thing I also wanted to show, like, so it's like, uh, I have like this whole like note thing with all the things that I wanted to demonstrate. So, uh, <laughs> with Evil Jinx Pro, it, it's uh, currently, I wanted to make it as easy as possible to set up uh, new servers. So for this, I wanted to show you how, how does it look to set up the new server? So we set up the server with servers, Evil Jinx demo, and now we need to put in uh, the IP of the server that we are that we have. So I prepared a droplet on uh, DigitalOcean that actually has this IP. Now we need to register this server with the license uh, server essentially so that it generates the, the, the new ID. Uh, one note, the IP of the server is never exposed. It is never sent to, to the licensing server. So this is like the private information that's being kept because I have like no reason to, to, to store this information in, in any way. Uh, and this whole like licensing system on Evil Jinx Pro works in such a way that it just needs uh, once a month to connect back uh, to the licensing server to update the licenses and it is done being done seamless in the in the background so even if like uh, my licensing server is done it is very low probability that uh, it will be an issue it's not like then always on drm or something that it it has to constantly being connected to you can actually see that it i set the license to expire every hour right now because i'm testing in production uh, essentially to make uh, to, to figure out if it's not gonna break at any point and it is uh, in meantime as I'm doing the demo, it's updating the licenses on all of the servers. <clears throat> and one thing which is important, uh, the servers do not contact the... So you can spawn as many Evil Jinx instances as you wish, uh, the servers. The, the license is only for one client uh, machine. And this is uh, something that, uh, that I'll demonstrate right now. So, uh, so when I register this server, it automatically it generated from the server this unique ID for the server. And now essentially it is it is registered. So now we can deploy it. And deployment of the server should be as simple as typing in servers, deploy, and the ID of the server. So now it will upload the Evil Jinx executable binary to the server, set up the, the license, set up the daemon, and uh, everything like this and i can now try to connect to it and and boom the server is already set up and what is more uh, interesting what i what i added is uh is like a multiplayer kind of collaboration between uh, other users of evil jinx so when you are the owner of the server so you set it up you deployed it you can let me show you so this is this is another this is another client uh, for using uh, Evil Jinx. It's, it's a different user. 
So this is like the user uh, breakdev.org. And this guy doesn't have access to this server. So how do they actually share this server? So th they have to share, uh, create the server the same way as the, the server owner did. So we do server add demo two. The name is not important really. Now I just need to copy the same IP because that's like the obvious thing that we need the same IP. And now we do not register the server, but we actually have to import uh, the data from it. And for that, we also need this uh, unique ID that the server generated. So when there are several employees like running Evil Jinx in, the, in one of the companies and they want to share one server to have uh, to collaborate on, uh, they just need to share this server ID between each other and the IP, obviously. And once this uh, this ID is copied, when I type in import, this will not work, by the way. So it says that the user breakdev.org uh, is not allowed to import this server. So this is like a security uh, protection, you may say. So you have to actually set up the, the user for this server. So we will add the user to this server and it now updated the server license uploaded the license to, to the server so i mentioned before that the the server evil jinx server never contacts the license server so all the all of the licenses are being updated from the evil jinx client on the uh, on the user's machine so this is also for security because uh, i'm sure uh, that red team companies would not want evil jinx servers they set up for uh, phishing engagements to be like connecting back to to uh, to to the licensing server just to expose the rip or 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 whatever and now when we try to import this server we we are it it succeeds and we have all the information and we can try to for the user to connect to it and you can see now we have both users being connected to the same server so if I now list all of the fishlets, you can see that this is the same set of fishlets that we have locally, which was uploaded. And if we create, for example, the lure for Google, you can see that all of the information is being sent to other users who are actually connected to the same server so that everyone knows what everyone is, is doing. So if you change the, the lure uh, information, for example, um, for example, the path to the lure, it will also get updated to to other users. So this is how I wanted to show how uh, essentially the deployment of the service and the multi-user collaboration works with uh, Evil Jinx Pro. If anyone has any questions, I would be happy to to answer. There are many questions. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, let me uh, jump back to this view for a second here. So let me go back up a little bit. I might miss a couple because there was a bunch. Um, like, I think this might be around where we started. Any solution for WhatsApp web, they use level DB and index DB, but not cookies. I think you already went through that, right? Yeah. We're good there. Uh, so can you please show us how to bypass deceptive site ahead warning on Google Chrome? Huh. Uh, uh, yeah. So this is something that, uh, that is tricky. So, okay. Um, there's one thing that also is present on it. So uh, once you set up the Evil Jinx, uh, it will automatically uh, open all of the... Um, so when you set up the, the phishing hostname and you uh, and you set up the phishing, you enable it, it will automatically by default uh, grab the TLS certificates from Let's Encrypt to, to set it up like seamlessly. And what's currently being done on the public version of Evil Jinx is uh, it will, every host name will get a different certificate. And all of these host names will land in the TLS uh, transparency log online. And all of the scanners are actually browse, uh, looking for new entries constantly. And once your certificate is registered, they will know about the full host name. So, all of the uh, bots, uh, security bots, will start scanning this domain if it's if it is not malicious by uh, any chance. Uh, and what is the difference with Evil Jinx uh, Pro is that first of all, it will 
um, grab the wildcard certificates, not like the, the full uh, certificate uh, for the full host name. So once you have the wildcard certificate, there's nothing really to scan because the, the full host name uh, is obscured by this asterisk, you can say, and th th the first subdomain is unknown. So they cannot like guess it and open open the fact and once uh, you also when you open maybe i can show quickly mm -hmm. i'll show it with my local setup i can show it with the with the linkedin uh fishlet so if you actually put the 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 URL, which is not the the lure URL that you have set up for the fish user to open, it will normally in in public version of Evil Jinx it will redirect you to a different website you set up or return a, a forbidden H HTTP code so that you cannot uh, open it. So only people who actually know the full valid lure URL can access uh, your phishing page that they can later. Uh, scan and tell if it is a phishing site or, or not but in evil jinx pro i implemented uh, something that's like that works like a like a proxy pass let me just check if it is set up properly oh yeah i need to i just need to clear the cookies because it already remembers that i am the, the i had a valid uh, evil jinx session set up but if you open the wrong, okay, now it's actually acting weird. So so essentially what I wanted to show is something that I currently, maybe there's the very simple reason why this is not showing but i will maybe try to show it on the on a different fishlet okay so we can see that i used the wrong your uh, lure url and it will not redirect me to the to the another website which can actually be detected that when any request to this host name redirects me to the Rickroll video, for example, on YouTube or, or a Dropbox or, or whatever, then it is kind of suspicious. So what I decided to do is do the same thing as the reverse proxy thing, like in Nginx, for example. So it will proxy the full request to a different web server that you pick. So in, in this situation, I proxy it to my blog, the breakdev.org. And you can see that it will, it is still, be, the, this whole uh, session is being uh, proxied, but it is showing a different website. So we can actually, it, it is in terms of anti-detection, uh, bypassing uh, detections, it is much less uh, suspicious in a way. And to answer the first question, how to uh, this, uh, like bypass this deceptive uh, website kind of thing it is essentially not to get your urls uh, scanned in any way obviously they will get scanned once you send them over email because you have to some somehow uh, deliver the email uh, to the to the to the end user but for that you can try and for example uh, pause the lure for a specific amount of time or maybe disable the disable the the, the fish lids in any way or you can try, for example, if you disable the fishlets before you actually send them and then send the link, then there is obviously nothing, uh, no one will be able to, to open this, uh, this website because uh, it will not respond. So there, is, there will be nothing to scan. So, okay, this was probably too long of an answer to just a simple question, but... <laughs> I was Hopefully just going to say that's the most comprehensive answer. <laughs> yeah. That's a great Sorry. answer. Um, no worries. That's great. Uh, somebody said earlier, what is the best way to protect your domain from being rated as a deceptive site? From being rated? But rated by by whom? I don't know. Uh, Offensive Paradise, if you want to elaborate on your question, we'll try to get back to it. All right. Let's see here. Going down for... Um, there's a bunch... 
puppet, evil, puppet, evil puppet sounds lit. That's great. Oh, somebody's asking about, uh, is there a new round of break dev registrations coming out soon? I, I think I know you wanted to mention that. Yeah, right. Yeah. So uh, for all of the viewers of, of by one security stream, there is like an open registration right now. And uh, uh, Stephen will be maybe so kind to plug uh, the, the link uh, somewhere below. So if you want to join the community, it is currently growing pretty well. Uh, we have all the red team professionals uh, there working in real red team companies and uh, the discussions are, are great and the people are also great. So it will be great to have more uh, people come in and, and see how, how good it is. And also like one what note is, is uh, one note is that uh, once I release Evil Jinx Pro, uh, it, uh, it will only be available to all the vetted people that I will accept to the break the threat community just for security reasons so that uh some like uh the, the good people get it probably I, I was just gonna say what what is something like one of the main things that would disqualify someone uh currently the main uh thing is to be working in some red team company or be self-employed and be working in a red team comp company but essentially i just need to confirm somehow that uh, <laughs> you are working in the industry and not trying to uh, scam people for money and look for coinbase fishlets or whatever yeah pro proton accounts tour nodes you know <laughs> right yeah exactly you have to have an email on the company domain that's like the main main thing so that i can later check this domain uh it's, it's funny because i also had all these ideas in my in mind that i will maybe not give away how 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 you can use reverse proxy uh to to fool the application but yeah, <laughs> so, so i'm checking all the uh, different kinds of stuff it, it takes a lot of time to actually vet all the people so but it is worth it like well worth it that, people are enjoying that should be it. a requirement that should yeah. be a requirement is they have to fish you and get, uh, yeah, yeah exactly like um let's see here uh, for red teamers that have newer staff are you planning to put out a training mastery class for the pro version uh at some point yes yes because i i i'm also thinking of maybe putting it out once the product is out to put it maybe free of charge because like the it will be a paid product so i will be maybe releasing uh, some training videos uh publicly to show all the features to also uh, give give people an idea if they should be buying it or they they are good with the with the public version so there will definitely be video materials i actually like the approach that uh, Raphael Mudge did with Cobalt Strike a uh, long time ago, how he released all of this kind of tutorials really well explaining all the new features that he's been adding. So th that was my like, that's my main like go to uh, when it comes to, to doing it in a perfect way. Yeah, nice. Uh, someone asked, and I'm going to answer first, and then you can answer. Someone asked, uh, <laughs> How does your tool compare to Marina and Necro Browser? I don't even know how to pronounce Marina, but yeah. um, that so that from my perspective, this one's way more intuitive to use. It's still technical to use, but it's uh, it, you can actually get it working quite easily. And I had a really hard time with Necro Browser and stuff. Yeah, well, I know uh, Giuseppe and uh, Michele who who released the 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 Murana, and we we talk to each other yeah. like uh, constantly. And uh, I the, the tools are very much alike. I have to like admit I haven't used uh, Morena, but I know Necro Browser is actually providing great thing that I do not have uh, yet. Maybe, but it is what, what it has a great idea implemented is once you actually capture the session, you can yeah. automate this whole session to extract what you want because sometimes you can you have like a time frame of maybe five ten seconds before the account is locked, and uh, you just need to grab whatever you can and you. You can. I think they also used the, some kind of uh, way. What I did in Evil Puppet with the Puppeteer, and you just automate the the browsing and the data extraction. And this is something I also have in mind later to to expand on the whole idea of Evil Puppet. Yeah, that's one of the challenges I have is getting the Docker containers with the headless Chrome instances going the way they're supposed to and communicating. Up. I, I just had trouble with it. So it's a yeah, fantastic tool and very well developed. It was just a little bit more complex to, yeah. uh, to get yeah, working. I, they, they use it internally most of the time and I, they, they customize it for their needs and it does probably yeah. great what they need. And it's just that they understand it the, the best way. So it probably works great. I can I can tell. 
Yeah, yeah. And I mean, like with anything, the best way to learn this stuff is to go and just beat your head against the wall and use it or go to your yeah. class. I mean, that's going to be the, I mean, being able to access to asking you these types of questions is like a priceless thing. So thank you again for coming on here. Um, how do you, this is a tough one to answer. How do you prevent evil jinx from being used maliciously? Uh, so I, at least I'm thinking about how to prevent people from using it maliciously when it comes to the pro version. Like this is as, as best as I can do with the, with the vetting process. And later there will probably be another vetting process, uh, before the, the whole purchase thing uh, comes in. I will also be monitoring uh, how many servers maybe are spawned by uh, by each user so that I know which accounts may be, uh, which, which licenses may have leaked, for example, so that I can act upon it. Because definitely I do not want to go into the situation like it was with Cobalt Strike, which is a great tool, but it essentially, if you do not protect it enough, it will eventually get leaked, cracked, and uh, bad things are gonna happen, and they're like happening till this day. The, the issue is that however well you protect it in terms of uh, communication with the, with the server, then when someone actually bypasses the protection offline, like cracks the, the, the code and uh, that's my main focus like i did my first share of reverse engineering like uh, back in the days uh, protecting uh, breaking protections as well so i know essentially what to focus on maybe and uh, we'll see but i th that's the only way i want to prevent it and also i do not want to yeah. make the the evil jinx the public version too easy to be undetectable it is already there are several ways how you can detect it and i recently i fixed like a, a bug a few days ago two days ago but it was a pretty severe bug and it's been there for like the last six years so which was pretty amazing but it was pretty easy to detect uh, some of the instances of evil jinx and i do not also want to make it easier to be uh, undetected for for the people who would want to use it maliciously so yeah, yeah, for sure. It's great that you put some thought into that. Um, here's a question. How reverse proxy handling absolute URLs on the page in JavaScript? Um, uh, okay, I think I, I understand. It, it, it's, <laughs> uh, it's about, I think, replacing, rewriting the, the contents of the URLs on the, on the website itself. So uh, to, to keep the reverse proxy session intact so that the user does not stray away to, to, to the legitimate server, you need to essentially replace all the URLs you find in the HTML content or JavaScript. Uh, but it is also pretty, there is very... Um, error prone because if you just miss one url that uh, you can also use some uh, javascript tricks to obfuscate the url and evil jinx will not be able to find it and then it will uh, cause uh, the 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 user to stray off the the reverse proxy phishing path so for now it works by just looking for the the legitimate url and replacing it with the phishing url and so far most of the websites uh, do not pose much of a problem but of course when websites are actually protected better then uh, they may use some clever tricks to to try to prevent this kind of thing so yeah yeah for sure there's an interesting question a little bit uh unrelated to our session but um the white house yeah i saw that i, was, I thought that was interesting that you know they don't they never comment on stuff like that so it's a bit wild to, to hear them say that and and as we all know, memory corruption bugs are notoriously associated with C, C++, Objective-C and such. And Rust is the savior, right? And we saw Microsoft. The, the Rust lobby is strong in the US, bro. <laughs> the Rust, Rust um, Microsoft obviously went through the K, through 32K.sys and stuff. They re-implemented some of that in Rust and then some yeah. of the um, handling of uh, windowing and driver, like not driver, but... Um, uh, what was I going to say? Graphics and such like that. Things that are typically exploited and to get privilege escalation and such in a kernel. Uh, stuff like fonts, uh, parsing. So, I, I mean, I, I'm not a Rust expert. I'm not even close. I'm, I wouldn't even call myself a, an amateur in Rust. I would call myself intermediate in C++. Um, and, and the developers I talk to who know both proficiently have said that they, they feel right now like Rust is a good contender for like user applications but not like server side 
big things and like there's a lot of growth still needed in Rust. So it's not quite there from that perspective, from what people have told me, but I'd be curious to hear your thoughts, Kuba. Yeah, actually, well, I'm also not a Rust expert, same as you. The one thing that I'm pretty amazed from what I heard is that uh, it can detect memory leaks at compile time, which is for me is like pretty like, well, it's like a minority, re minority reports kind of uh, thing with uh, Tom Cruise or whatever. Yeah. But it, it's, it sounds interesting, uh, definitely. I don't I know that uh, I think Discord had uh, one post many years ago uh, where they actually said that they moved from Go to Rust because it was faster so there is some use for server side i think applications for rust already but i think the main problem yeah. of rust is that it doesn't have many uh, libraries uh, ready because like the, the right. go ecosystem uh, go language ecosystem is is amazing because whatever you need you will find it like it, it has so many like different libraries already made which are well maintained well documented it, it's it's easy to make everything and for writing server or client software it's just a breeze like that's why i also use it for development of evil jinx because it's it's so so nice but uh yeah, in terms of C, C++, like, uh, like I, I can imagine like that uh, memory leaks uh, are, well, not memory leaks, but memory corruption thing is it's so easy to actually make a mistake when developing. I'm, I also developed my first share of stuff in C++ and I know how hard it is. You cannot hire a junior programmer to develop in, in, in C++ for you. You'd, pr you'd prefer to hire someone who who will program in higher uh, level languages just so that it is less uh, uh, risky for them to to not make like any mistakes yeah for sure I've been, and i've been reading uh, quite a bit about logic bugs and rust starting to be you know being identified and someone was saying like comparing it to haskell and where it's got like different ways in which it handles things like refutable pattern is local binding and random things but like how they're, again, they're just identifying logic bugs. And I, as as you all know, once some bug class gets killed, you have to migrate to a new area. So we start examining the ta attack surface mm -hmm. and coming up with new ways to do things. But still today, the human is still the weakest link. So we can always exploit them if we need to. <laughs> right, of course. Right. It's like with, cool. with the fishing being the last resort, as, as always. So um, before we get to the giveaways and such, do you have anything else you want to show us before we? Uh, I'm thinking about maybe showing quickly this Cloudflare thing because I thought it is it will be pretty interesting. I just need to like set it up. I'll probably uh, do it in Burp. Yeah, because I have to. Okay, so I'll clear the history in Burp. I think while I you're have... doing that, someone's someone's asking about the the price range uh, for. Uh, for Evil Jinx Pro, it will be yeah. uh, very likely from 1200 to 1400 euro. With 20% uh, discount, per, though. Per, <laughs> per year. Yeah, well, the, uh, you mean the, the, the course or the... Yeah. <laughs> well, but, but oh. Regarding the discounts for that, like on the on the release day, I maybe put uh, maybe we'll put like a 10% <laughs> discount for, uh, for a short period of time. I'm trying but, to set uh, them up. That's what's going on. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> Okay, so uh, I will open GitLab, and now we c you should be able to see. Sorry for the speed, but because it's burp uh, suite, <laughs> like being proxied, and it's in Java, so. Okay, let's sign in. When I click sign in, it should actually open this uh, kind of like a Cloudflare uh, protection. Thing. Oh, you can see this is just a moment. So this is the thing that I was talking about. You cannot really fish a site that is protected with this Cloudflare thing, uh, security thing uh, at the, the highest setting. Because uh, now that you actually s click this verify human. So this is something that I would like to test with Evil Puppet. You, you just open it in the background, you click it. And then I can show you how to ex actually extract the, the... Now we should be able to see the packet that actually didn't go through.
Okay, this is, I think, this sign-in thing. Okay, so you see it responded with 403 uh, forbidden. And this is when I now throw it into the repeater. Then we can repeat this packet and it should constantly give us this 403 uh, forbidden kind of thing. But now I'll try to use uh, the legitimate browser. So that would be, for example, Evil Puppet running in the background and I will, which will open the website and click this thing. And now we will extract the CF clearance cookie. So I'll copy this value. What, one thing that I also have to copy is the, the user agent. So I will grab it from here somewhere. So let's get back to, to burp. I will clear all of the cookies, actually, because I tested it today and it, it seemed to be working. So you put CF clearance cookie with this value that we copied. And we also have to use, because this, uh, this token uh, that's being sent in the cookie is also bound to the, to the user agent. So we just have to quickly grab the name of the user agent somewhere. Okay, it is here. So let's copy the user agent, then go to the burp suite and then replace the user agent value with this one. And now when you put send, it's uh, 200. It's okay. So it, it opens like the real uh, login website. So this is like a trick that will bypass Cloudflare security. And I plan to implement it with Evil, Jing, uh, Evil Puppet, which will open this website, click this verify human thing because it will expect it, and then grab the cookie from this background browser, inject it back into, into the reverse uh, Evil Jinx reverse proxy session, also change the user agent, and voila. And then the, this whole phishing process will, will proceed without this Cloudflare protection thing uh, loading and uh, causing problems with, uh, with the phishing, essentially. <laughs> so yeah, that, that, that's it basically for, for the Cloudflare thing. And I do not have anything else to, to show. Well, I can also like uh, briefly also say about how else you can detect uh, the, the, the phishing, the Evil Jinx server, for example. So every uh, TLS library that is being used for... Uh, handshaking with the with the remote servers will use its own set of predefined um, ciphers for example and uh, there was this project called uh, JARM and I think there was also this JA3 or J4 uh, which uh, tries to fingerprint either clients using TLS or servers responding to TLS handshakes and create like this unique hash uh, for for them based on what ciphers uh, they either support uh, for the servers or uh, for the clients to um, what which which ciphers they want to which ciphers they announce to the server that they are uh, ready to to use. So this is pretty interesting because this is how. Evil Jinx, the public version is also being detected by Cloudflare, I found, I think, a year ago. And once you use Evil because Evil Jinx will dissect the connection and it will do the connection for you. So it is actually Evil Jinx connecting to Cloudflare and Cloudflare is able to tell that it is Evil Jinx connecting based on these uh, TLS uh, configuration of uh, ciphers that it is using. So. The trick is to change these ciphers on the client so that, uh, and the best even is to change them to uh, to what Chrome is using, for example, or even better to capture the ciphers from the TLS handshake that was established with between the fished user and the Evil Jinx server. It grabs these ciphers and then replay uh, the same set of ciphers when making the connection to the uh, endpoint destination server. So that would be a, a, a nice trick to also make it less detectable. So I, I plan to implement all this in Evil Jinx Pro just to make it fully, uh, like you can say white label, I don't know. Nice, that's awesome. 
Great. So, I mean, that was, that was a really great session. One of my favorite. I already tweeted that out. Um, there's a lot of great Thank information you. and it's, it gets me excited to go use the tool now. So, <laughs> um, so if you're ready, let's uh, move on to giving away a couple seats to your class. I've uh, written a couple of questions while you're going. The two of them are really easy. One of them's a bit harder, so we'll see uh, how quickly someone gets it. So how it's going to work is I will read the question slowly and then the first person whose post shows up on the screen with the right answer will be the winner so remember there's a little bit of a delay but it's the same delay for everybody so it's about 10 seconds and the first right answer that comes up will be the winner the way that i want you to contact me to get the actual uh, seat information, the training code and such, is to join the Discord server. It's gonna be the easiest way to be able to DM me. I posted the link to the Discord server below and just DM me and uh, you know, send me the name that you use on uh, YouTube and I'll validate you, don't worry. <laughs> um, so cool, let me pull them up real quick. First one, super, super easy. It is, what? is the specification we mentioned that tools like YubiKeys use. So what is the specification that tools like YubiKeys use? Oh, the best keyboard warrior wins. Fido2, Michelle said it first. So I definitely know who he is, so he won't be able to trick me. Or someone else won't be able to trick me and pretend they're him. So, uh, Great. So, Michelle, you're the winner of uh, one of the seats. So, please do DM me on Discord. The link to Discord is on the bottom of the screen right now. The next question. Yeah, congratulations. Um, that's awesome. So, the next question. This one's I thought was a little funny because I didn't know when I when I first started talking to Cuba. What country is Cuba from? Let's see, I'll be people googling very fast. Someone's like, "Wait, Gretzky, Gretzky, oh, yeah." <laughs> I remember Wayne Gretzky. Gre Gretzky player. is Canada, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that was uh, J. No, Ner Nero, Nero Two K. Wow, people posted fast. So Nero Two K, you almost, are the Pavel, almost. Yes, you are the winner of that one. Congratulations! Reach out to me on Discord, please. Slow keyboard. <laughs> um, great. So the last one's a little bit hard. I think it might somebody might know it right away, but uh, you had to have been paying attention. And Kuba needs to be the one who says if it's the right answer or not. Because uh, I'm not Yes, it is. Okay. It is. <laughs> no, no, not that one. The next one. Oh, the next yeah, one. Yeah. Oh, okay. You, okay. You, I thought that you were asking me if Poland is my uh, nationality. You, okay. You said this in the middle of the presentation while you were demonstrating, and then you started okay. to talk about it. So I want to make sure that you say ah, okay, the right okay, answer okay. on this one. Okay. So, so I'm, I'm paying attention now. Yes, yes. So what is, from Kuba's perspective, how he mentioned it, a secret token or shadow token? What is that? You know the answer, right, Kuba? Yeah, it's, I don't know if it's just one sentence for an answer. <laughs> well, you're going to have to pick the best one. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. 10 seconds <laughs> in, and now... So what is a secret or shadow token in relation to what Kuba was going over? I hear chat GPT going okay, on. Okay, right now, now. Ev yeah, now everyone is putting in some very descriptive answers, I can tell. All right, first answer. Can you a a of... Okay, I think Joe was pretty close and also first. Yeah, I think, I think Joe actually. Joe is first and actually it is. Uh, Pretty on point. It's like a fingerprint of the browser. Yeah. So Joe said a token that includes encrypted fingerprint information about the browser. You are the winner, Joe. So I definitely know who you are as well on the social. So no one will be able to trick me on that one either. So again, please uh, DM me on Off by One Security Discord and congratulations again. And um, now we're going to go ahead and post uh, Randall in the background there. If you can post the uh, discount, kick my banner off and post a discount code information for the class so you can get 20 percent off if you want to take the class with kuba which is very generous all this is very generous thank you so much kuba. no it's like i'm i'm pretty like happy about this community and how people actually uh that people are essentially willing to pay for the for the course and use evil jinx so i'm pretty amazed myself so 
I think people are the generous part in here. Yeah, that's awesome. I mean, great. So there is the uh, link and such posted up there. It's also in the chat while we wrap it up here. Next week, what are we doing next week? I always, it's bad, it's bad of me. I, I'm scheduling so many things. I don't ever remember what's coming up the next week of the stream. So um, if someone knows what the stream is next week, so I don't have to go look for it, please post it so I can say, uh, say what it is. But I'm getting some more people uh, signed up for some streams as well, some really neat ones. I've got one coming up in a couple months now. It's going to be uh, a demonstration of like how you do ICS hacking against things like the, the board. I, I'm not versed in that area, but things like the controllers and all that you have in those environments, like nuclear power plants and water treatment plants. I'm going to have someone come on to go over that kind of stuff, which is going to be nice. Uh, thank you, Randall. It is... Pending topic on Ida Pro. Oh, that's me. <laughs> All right. <laughs> that's why I didn't remember who's coming up. So apparently, I need to get back to Hex Rays because Hex Rays is giving me a Ida Pro license and Hex Rays decompiler license with one architecture that you want to choose, like ARM or X64. That is that is fantastic. That's a that's a nice gift as well because that's a couple thousand US dollars. So. I will be giving that away next week unless they tell me that they have to hold off for a little bit. I think it's going to be fine and go forward. Um, they're also supposed to be sending me some swag that I can maybe give some away. So that'll be a fun one. I just got to figure out what I'm going to be talking about. I'm going to do some probably a neat thing on like Ida Pro scripting is what I'm thinking for like vulnerability hunting, bug hunting. So, yep. Yeah, and uh, the 15th of March, we've got Duncan Ogilvy, developer of X64 Debug, which is probably the best user land debugger out there actively maintained but i met this guy last year by accident at zifcon and it was like i i almost felt like i met a legend like like what you did that like it's just like pretty amazing that i i'm also like i think this guy is a legend so i would definitely be going onto the stream <laughs> for that one well you're a legend too man so no, but, no, uh... not as much as this guy <laughs> like uh, writing debuggers that's yeah that's, that's definitely awesome so um, great. I think we're going to finish up there. Everyone have a great weekend. And thanks again to Thank uh, you for Cuba. having me. And it was a blast. Thank you also, everyone, for uh, coming and uh, watch me uh, mumble about this whole thing. So thank <laughs> you. <laughs> It'll be up on YouTube shortly. So we'll see you next time. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.